Maxine, she's a beauty. I mean, she practically was telling people the other day to assault. Can you imagine if I said the thing she said? Can you imagine, seriously, if I said that or somebody else said that? Welcome back to AM Joy. Congresswoman Maxine Waters made it clear this week she is not advocating physical harm in urging people to publicly confront the Trump administration over immigration policy in acts of civil disobedience. We'll hear more from her later in the show. But as for Donald Trump, it's actually pretty easy to imagine him promoting physical assault because he, he did multiple times throughout his presidential campaign at rallies and speeches. And yet, Sarah Huckabee Sanders' dismissal from a Virginia restaurant sparked calls from Trump and the right this week for civility in politics. True story. And we've all seen just how civil this president can be. So we have a single protester. He's going home to his mom. Say hello to mommy. Sleepy eyes Chuck Todd. He's a sleeping son of a bitch, I'll tell you. Get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired! The guards are very gentle with him. He's walking out like big high fives, smiling, laughing. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Oh, the poor guy, you gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. He's, He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I said, please don't be too nice. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, you know? The way you put their hand over. Like, don't hit their head, and they've just killed somebody. Don't hit their head. I said, you can take the hand away, okay? Joining me now is Eric Bollard, senior writer at Share Blue Media, Tiffany Cross, founder of The Beat DC, Jennifer Rubin, opinion writer for The Washington Post, and Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoot.com. Uh, I'm going to start with you on this, Eric. Sarah Sanders this week had some lectures for us all on civility. Here is one. Healthy debate on ideas and political philosophy is important. America is a great country, and our ability to find solutions despite those disagreements is what makes us unique. That is exactly what President Trump has done for all Americans. Is that what Donald Trump has done for all Americans? <laughs> He's unleashed uh, this kind of hate speech we haven't really seen. You know, he's kind of taken the Breitbart comments section from the Obama years and turned it into mainstream politics. I mean, you, you, you play the clips. I mean, he, he's been doing this for years. You know, and, and the problem was a lot of the press kind of picked up this faux civility debate. Um, you know, Barack Obama hadn't even sworn in his cabinet when these Tea Party kind of hate rallies began. That was populism, right? right. When the right wing does it, it's populism. It's right. grassroots. It's voter engagement. Uh, after 18 months, when a few people drop, you know, the F word or something like that, you know, it's Katie bar the door. Look, the problem is, this is a radical minority that's trying to uh, rule a majority, right? We have a president who lost the popular vote, who's now going to try to ram through a Supreme Court nomination so the Republican Party can outlaw choice in this country. I mean, these are not civil times. These are not times to sit back and say, well... You know, I think if we play nice with him in a year or two, he'll come around. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I think there's a frustration. You know, there's a certain amount of elite institutions that are saying, well, calm down. It's not time to be calm. Well, and to say with you just for a moment, I mean, it does seem that the Trump side understands the media in an organic way, that the media wants, that the media will err toward the moderate. Right. And that they will be very quick to lash out at a man, to criticize a Michelle Wolf for the, right. uh, for the, you know, skit that she did at the White House Correspondence Center and stay on that and come down on her really hard. Right. But when it comes to when we saw Donald Trump even embracing some ideas that a lot of people are being bluntly, the alt-right is white nationalist, but they were very carefully called populist nationalists, and that's all right. you were allowed to call them. Right, you still can't call them white nationalists. Uh, and, and, and that's part of, they do know how the game is played. They've been bullying the press for so long uh, that they don't, they refuse to recognize what's going on. I mean, we have a federal government, the government that is essentially kidnapping kids at the border and holding them hostage, telling their parents, you can have them back maybe if you drop your asylum case and you leave the country. Uh, and, and this is, this is insanity, right? And again, so it's not time for civility, and the press plays into this, yeah. uh, and, and right-wing hate is, is popular. And even when the attack is on the press, I, I want to play just for those who maybe have forgotten Donald Trump attacking the press, calling the press itself the enemy of the people. Take a listen. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people, and they are. They are the enemy of the people. I figured fake news, CNN. The worst. So you can tell that to your fake friends at CNN. One of the uh, opposing 
networks, you know, the enemy, the enemy of the people, I call them. Now, of course, after five people were shot and killed in a Maryland newspaper, in the Maryland Capitol Gazette uh, newsroom, Trump then came out and had some more moderate words saying, you know, that the, the attack shocked the conscience of our nation. Journalists, like all Americans, should be free from the fear of being violently attacked while doing their job. A completely different message, but it, it doesn't negate the earlier. I mean, it's hard to not hear that anymore. Right. I, I pay no attention to his words. I don't think they um, have heavy weight because somebody could articulate a talking point for him via Twitter or a statement. I mean, they really don't carry much weight when you juxtapose that with what we just saw. But I have to tell you, Joy, for me, what was most disturbing about this entire thing is it took Democrats 2.5 seconds to go from the hashtag trust black women to shushing Maxine Waters, which was very disappointing. And when, when Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer came out with their statements, I just shuddered because I thought, you clearly did not consult any senior black woman on your staff about this statement and how disappointing is that. Also, I think when you um, look at the rhetoric coming from the, the right and, and to your point about how the media Media is all too happy to fall into this trap of making this false equivalency. Where was this outrage when you had Joe Wilson shouting, you lie at President Barack Obama? It's, it's kind of ridiculous. And I think when you um, look at uh, some of the reaction from the Democrats, and it's just, you know, kind of weak. And I think the Democrats have to be comfortable making people uncomfortable. Because when you're fighting for justice and equality, it's not always time. These are people who serve the public. You're going to hear from the public. And just like we were talking about in the um, immigration debate last hour, you can have a white kid pepper schools with bullets every other week and policy doesn't move. But a person of, of, of ethnic descent doing something on, on domestic soil can move policy. So th this administration has the courts, they have the House, they have the Senate. All the American people have is their voice and their vote. They need to be using both all the time. And the reason why they're falling for this false equivalency is because they don't want these people out at voting booths. They don't want people using their voice. They don't want another alternative to their alternative facts shouting them down when they're clearly uh, wrong and, and championing this kind of uh, rhetoric and, and racism and a system of supremacy. So here we are again yeah. with Trump supporters and the Make America Great People. Your hypocrisy wow. is showing yet again. And, and Jason, it is interesting that, you know, um, you do have, I mean, I, I do think the Trump side do understand that the media's default is for everyone to calm down. You've had a lot of right. people saying that people are being hysterical about what the Supreme Court change could mean and sort of hysterical about where the times are moving because people are using words like white supremacy or fascism and talking about that. And then they're being told in a lot of ways by the institutional world that they're, that they're being too, you know, that they're being too over the top. Right, right. And, and here's the problem. This whole civility debate is ridiculous to be, Joy. I mean, like, it, it's like Drake said, nice for what? Why, why, why do Democrats have to be nice to Republicans? Republicans have said women who want abortions, you know, should be punished, and, and, and African Americans need to be beaten up, and, and what the cops do is always fine, and, and families can be separated. This is an attempt to tone police people who are being attacked and oppressed. And let's, I'm old enough to remember something called political correctness, right? That was civility back in the 90s, when it was like, yeah, you know, maybe you shouldn't call women chicks, and maybe you shouldn't call Asian people just Chinese, because you don't want to find out where they're from. And and these same people, these same moderate centrist Democrats right now and same media people were saying, I can't stand political correctness. But the fact of the matter is they're afraid of justified change in how people feel that they should be spoken to. No one should be nice to this administration. You should speak the truth, even if it makes people uncomfortable. And Jennifer, I'll, I'll come to you on this. Michelle Goldberg had a great piece this week where she yes. talked about the fact that Republicans have all the power. They have all the governmental power. The only thing that liberals have is social power. And so that's what they're using in order to try to fight back and that even that is being told well that's too much you oughtn't do that if you're mean to them you're going to drive them toward the the the, the sort of you know the neo-nazis it's your fault if they then go there you know, I haven't spent my whole life um, in the Democratic Party. In fact, um, I was in another party for yes. my whole life until very recently when I don't have a party. But I am amazed at the ability of Democrats to screw up a one-car parade. Why in the world would they come out and attack their own? Immediately, the conversation has to be, this is the most uncivil, racist, misogynistic president who seeks to divide us, whose opening appeal in his campaign was to call Mexican immigrants rapists and murderers. Don't play defense, play offense. And frankly, 
the next time that Sarah Huckabee Sanders or the president starts in with his fake news and enemy of the people, I would suggest one of two things. Either the entire press corps walk out of the briefing room. Why should they put on air a message that is a coded word to every nutcase in America to come after them? So get up and leave. Or in unison, holler back. They sit there. They take it. They record it. We have to be there. We have to um, let them say their piece. No, you don't. Um, your lives are all in danger. Your lives are on the line. These people whip up a crowd, and it's not right. just gunmen. When my colleagues go to a rally and he turns the crowd against them, so they are screaming in their faces, and he selects out one or two reporters, as he did with Katie Turr. What do you think that is? That's an incitement to violence, too. And I think the press has to defend them. I think Democrats have to defend them. And I think this um, argument about using the outside salad fork first or whatever it is that they, you know, concern themselves with is silly. I do think there's one point that um, they miss, however, and that is you have to do what is most effective. Yeah. I don't think what's most effective is throwing Sarah Huckabee Sanders out of a restaurant. I wouldn't serve her either, frankly. But what's most successful is getting a million people on the street to protest. Yeah. So let's redirect um, all of that good pent-up energy to something that makes a difference. Let's get a million people to go to Maine or a million people to go to Alaska and start putting pressure on those senators. Yeah. So it's perfectly civil to do that. No one's telling them to be violent protesters. But we're not going to let these people go through life unscathed. Sarah Huckabee has no right to live a life of no fuss, no muss after lying to the press after inciting against the press. These people should be made uncomfortable, and I think that's a life sentence, frankly. And, and very, very quickly, just to give you the last word on this, Eric, on the press part, yeah. the, the Republicans know that the press won't do that. Yeah. They won't resist it at all. Well, look, right? you know, to, to, the, to their credit, the Toronto Star last week documented 103 lies Trump told in one week. In one week. Does that make a difference, though? Because but, but, his base doesn't care. But the, and the New York Times specifically will not call him a liar. So this game is rigged. He knows the game is rigged. The Republican Party knows the game is rigged. The, the, too many in the press have just taken down the guardrails for Trump. Just do whatever you want. We're not going to hold you accountable in a serious kind of Why way. Why do you suppose that is, then? It's, the, it's decades. It's decades of uh, bullying. Uh, and the bullying campaign works because the press won't acknowledge they're being bullied. I mean, that's the perfect mission accomplished. And I think too many in the institutions in D.C. see this, still see this as a game, right? They're still keeping score, who's up, who's down. As I was talking about, we are so far past Watergate in terms of the damage being done to this country, in terms of the institutions and the liberties and things like that. This is not a game. We don't need scorecards. You know, yeah. we, we just don't. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, it's a difficult con uh, conversation for this business. Uh, Eric Bullard, thank you very much. Tiffany, Jennifer, and Jason will join us again later. And stay right there.